Here's a quote from Rob Manfred in a call from reporters yesterday. It is telling. He says, this needs to be over. I told him 70 games was simply impossible given the calendar and the public health situation. And he, I'm assuming Tony Clark there, went ahead and made that proposal anyway. It is getting dicey. Let's bring in Buster Olney and Doug Glanville to talk more about this. By the way, according to the union proposal, the players would have to report a week from today. This is feeling like a high-stakes game of chicken buster. Where do things stand right now? Yeah, Ryan, look, you would think that they're close enough now that they would work out their differences. The owners proposing 60 games early in the week. The players uh, countering with 70 games uh, yesterday. And I said, uh, people have told me from both sides that they're close enough now where both sides have to assess, look, am I really, are we really ready to blow up the season over these differences? Or are we going to find a sweet spot, maybe 64 games in the middle, 65, 66, or something like that? But as one person said to me, this relationship is so toxic and so unproductive that it is unpredictable. I do think they'll eventually get a deal. Maybe they'll get it today, maybe over the weekend. And only then can we really begin to assess the damage to the product because of how these negotiations have played out over the last six weeks. Okay, so a hint of optimism for you, Buster. Doug, what's your reaction? Well, you know, they can't even seem to agree on what they've agreed upon. You know, I mean, that's a, <clears throat> when you look at that, you know, you see the dialogue in, in the sort of open market of people discussing it publicly. And it's so inconsistent because they have to go back to their constituents and get feedback and then go back. But in between, they're having this sort of public discussion. And it's very counterproductive. And what they have to be mindful of, you know, lessons from when I was part of the executive subcommittee over PEDs, then John, John McCain, Senator John McCain, jumped in from his Commerce Committee and started to get involved. Now, we have a lot of other things that Congress is working on, given the pandemic, but you don't want the, sort of it to get to the stage where now public officials start chiming in saying, what's the problem? Maybe it's your antitrust exemption. I mean, you're starting to open up the door for everybody to get in because they see 70 and 60 and they say, wow, add those two and divide by two, and, and there you go. There's your number. So... They have, a, they have to be very careful about who might now start stepping in. That's the last thing you want, outside influences coming in. So, Buster, you mentioned a little hint of optimism there. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Percentage-wise, what are the chances that a season happens? Let's say from zero to 100%. I think it's 100% that they'll to get a season going because it's so important to the sport. It's put so important to each side. And if either side blows it up at this point, they're going to look like complete villains. If, in fact, they do get an agreement on the money, though, that's the Mount Everest of these talks. Right behind it is K2, which is to keep the players uh, safe, to keep them healthy under the safety and health protocol that they have to go through. And you mentioned the timeline. Like, the reality is the clock and the calendar are absolutely kicked in at this point. They have to get moving to get all these processes in place to do everything they can to keep the players and staffers safe. And, you know, Doug, Buster talks about the idea of the impact on the game. As this goes further, what kind of impact do you think it has on the reputation and the way people see the game? <laughs> well, it's, it's definitely negative, Ryan. I mean, you, you recognize what people are facing in the larger society, the health crisis, unemployment. I mean, you're not going to get a whole lot of sympathy along those lines because of the stress everybody's under. So the timeline not only opens up the door for more information and concerns as we're opening up as a country, uh, the virus is still present. So that's going to make it more stressful on everyone as they sort of don't move forward and don't put protocols in place to actually address these issues. 